Hare Krishna, Didi. Thank you for that. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Mangala Charan. O Gyan Tigurandasya Gyanan Ganeshala Kaya Chakshurun Balitam Dina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Sarishtam Manama Pishaja Putra Patra Swarupam Rupam Tasyakrajam Rupurim Aturim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivar Maho Radhika Madhavasham Prapto Yasya Prachadat Rupaya Shri Guru Tam Natosmi He Deva He Daira He Bhona He Kabando He Krishna He Chapal He Karuna He Kasindo He Nath He Rama He Naina Virama चला प्रचलित गुरु शिष्य में भक्ति दान देना रहे तो संग महाराज जी के अभय चरणा रहे बिंदों में मैं अनंत कोटि दंडक प्रणाम अर्पण करता हूँ तिरंडी स्वाम शिष्य में भक्ति दान तिरंडी महाराज नाम रिश्ते संतोष वैनरुद्ध दास प्रभु जी और समस्त वैष्णव वैष्णव के चरणों में मैं इतना के दंडक प्रणाम � going to begin on the page number 187, I think, right? So, uh, 187 or 188? Mm. 187, Maharaj. 187, okay. So, yesterday, we, last time we discussed the sins. There are different types of sins. Ati Patak, Maha Patak, Anu Patak, Upa Patak, Sankari Gana, Apatri Karana, Jati Bhattushakara, Malavaha and Prakirana. Hmm. There are different, different things they have been described in the scriptures. Hmm. Actually, um, there is one book called Chaitanya Shambhata. This book is actually a very good book. Um, and uh, you can all, um, if you get an English translation, it will be a good one. You should study this book, um, Chaitanya Shikshamrutha. Uh, but Srila Gurudev um, has uh, translated this book from Bengali to Hindi, uh, Chaitanya Shikshamrutha. It describes many, many things about these scenes. And uh, uh, in Chaitanya Shikshamrutha, you'll see that uh, different topics are discussed. Uh, that how the atheist is there, the material world, and its distressful nature, what is the duty, what are the different types of acharyas, spiritual masters. Um, so, how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu preached the holy name, then Krishna Shakti, Maya Shakti, all these things, Vivartavad, all these things you see that there's a great discussion of um, um, things are there. You know. What is one's qualification, and what is uh, contamination of um, World of Avichar, um, so many things are there to discuss. Huh? So, um, uh, in that one, actually, you'll see that uh, on page number 136, is talking about scenes there in that book. Um, page number 136, Srila um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is uh, talking that how to behave honestly. One should be compassionate, one should be grateful, one should speak the truth, one should be straightforward, one should not steal, one should not over collect, one should be kind, one should be renounced, one should um, um, respect the scriptures, visit the holy places, all these things he has discussed in that one. And uh, he has certainly talked about different scenes also in that one. So those who want to study further, they can study this particular um, uh, duties of human beings. And then in that one, he's telling that the life of a grist, the householder, should always be very pure, very pious, and he should be devoid of sins. Uh, 
So actually he is giving a list of 11 sin, prominent sins. And he is quoting a verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 11 Canto 23rd chapter 18 and 19 verse. Steyam hyamsa nutam damba kama prodha smayo mada Petu vairama vishwasa samspardha tasanani cha Iti panchadasha nartha hartha mula matanunam Tasmada nartha markhartham sriyo arthi durastate uh, the eleven sins are himsa, hating someone, uh, showing spite, nishtartha, being cruel, uh, being crooked, uh, speaking false things, being uh, showing madness, and rejecting the order of the spiritual master, disobeying the order of the spiritual master, excessive lusty nature, uh, and to be extremely selfish, to remain impure, not to follow the Vaishnava etiquette, and acting in a way that will cause the destruction of the whole world. So Narahimsa and Pashyahimsa. Actually, in that one is talking about the violence is of three types: killing the human beings, killing the animals, and also attacking the demigods. Deva Himsa. Hmm. The desire to destroy others is called violence. Himsa. And this violence comes from hate. So if you have attachment to some objects, then that is called drag or attachment. And if you are detached from some object, then it is called hate. Dvesha. Hmm. If you have proper attachment, then it is pious. Uh, but if you have improper attachment, then it is called lampatte or lusty, covetousness. Understand? Understand? So basically, suppose you are attached to your own wife and you love your wife, then that is actually pious because it's necessary that husband and wife must have love between them. But if you love someone else's wife, then that attachment is empty attachment and that comes under lust. And if you have attachment and then also dvesha, hate is also there. These are two opposite characteristics. But there are some, some things we must hate. We must hate stealing. We must hate criticizing others. But if you, so that is pious to hate sin. But unnecessary hate is violence and is the cause of enviousness. Our behavior, Bhagavan Thakur is telling, should be full of love. But a sinful person behaves opposite. He shows violence and uh, enviousness towards other. So uh, violence is the greatest sin. Yeah. Everyone should give up violence. Killing human beings is the greatest sin. Uh, understand? Killing human beings. So now he is telling that Jis Manushya ke prati hinsa ki jati us Manushya ki mahanta ke tarata mein se hinsa ka labut hai guru ko ka vichar hota hai. So basically, um, suppose you are killing some human being, then who you are killing that decides the gravity of the sin. Suppose you are killing a Brahmana, it's a very great sin. If you are killing your relatives and friends, that is a great sin. Killing a woman is also a great sin. Killing a Vaishnava is a great sin. Killing your spiritual master is also a great sin. Also, killing human, killing animals is also not an ordinary sin. There are some persons who are actually attached to their belly and attached to their tongue to satisfy the lusty desires of their tongue. They kill the animals. Yeah, if even if they don't kill the animals, they will get the butcher to kill for them. This actually shows the low character of a very vile person. As long as we don't give any violence to the animals, one's character cannot become splendid or brilliant. Now, he's telling that in Vedas, there is some arrangement is given that you can do an animal sacrifice. But 
the aim and object of this arrangement of the Vedas, so that you can sacrifice an animal, is to reduce the tendency to slaughter animals. And slowly, slowly, this to complete detachment on such violent persons and make them detached even from killing any animal. So Vedas slowly, slowly try to help you get rid of that bad habit of killing animals by giving some rules and regulations. So killing an animal is a business of another animal. Like you'll see in YouTube, so many videos are there. Like you get a lion, lion will try to kill elephant, giraffe, zebra, like this. That is the nature of a lion. But it doesn't suit a human being to kill animals. No. If a lion hunts a deer, that is the nature of the lion. But if human hunts a deer, that is sinful. So in Bhagavatam it is told, Loke Vivaya Visha Madhya Seva Nityasta Jantor Nahitatra Chodana Vivasthis Vivasthis Desha Vivaha Yadnya Sura Krai Rashu Nivrit Rishta Yad Ghrana Bhaksho Vihita Sura Yastata Pasho Rala Vanam Nayamsa Evam Vivaya Prajana Ratya Imam Vishuddham Navidok Swadharma Krishna is telling Uddhavai People are naturally attracted to Vivaya Sense gratification they are attached to drinking liquor. They are attached to eating meat. So what Vedas have done, they said, okay, you want sense gratification, get married. You want to drink liquor, then, or want to eat meat, then you do fire sacrifice, and slaughter a goat. But slowly, slowly, one should give up all that. Even married life, one should give up and become one prasthan and sannyas. So Vedas slowly, slowly try to bring you to the point of completely abstaining from sense gratification, drinking liquor and eating meat. For example, Vedas don't recommend drinking liquor. Even if there is an arrangement for offering liquor, that liquor should be smelt and not drunk. If animal slaughter is recommended in the scripture somewhere, then you take a knife, touch it to the neck of the goat and maybe cut a few hair from there, a few, a few hair and let the goat go, not kill the goat. It is only symbolic slaughter is there, means only taking, cutting only a few hair from there or maybe just touching the knife and letting go. And if People are interested in sense gratification, so they are recommended. We get nice children for spreading Krishna consciousness. So basically, Vedas always recommend detachment. And even if there is sense gratification, the aim and object is to beget Krishna conscious children. But there is another type of violence. Some people commit violence to the demigods. So you see that. For worshipping Bhagwan in different different countries, different different arrangements are there. So if you follow the arrangements given in those countries, you will obtain the topmost religion of worshipping the Supreme Lord. But there are some people, ignorant people, those who don't know the truth, they are only bearers of the flag of their own religion and they say that our arrangement is the best and the arrangement of the other countries is the criticize for example there is pakistan they say that islam is the best sunni religion is the only religion that is the best and what hindus do in india uh, they, they, they are wrong and so many times uh, they attack india they want to wipe out Hinduism. This is not a correct interpretation of their religion. Okay, you are believing Islam and you are trying to understand God through the scriptures of Islam. Good, follow that. But don't criticize the path of others. Hmm. That is not recommended. And not only that, they try to destroy temples of other religions in their country and they even break the deities also this is called deva yonsa understand 
In a lot of times you get a report from Pakistan and Rahul Pindi and Lahore that they, that they destroy the temples of Hindus. Understand? But they don't know that God is one. Not two gods are there. What God the Muslims are worshipping, what God the Christians are worshipping, the same God the Hindus are also worshipping. Followers of Sanatana Dharma also worshipping. So actually when Muslims are breaking the temple of Hindus, then actually they are committing uh, they are committing atrocity on Bhagwan himself, Parameshwar. This is a violence towards Bhagwan. So therefore, every human being should stay away from these animalistic propensities, these illegal propensities, they may himself. Shiva Bhagavatam 11, kind of 5th chapter 16th verse tells about this. Ye kaivalyam samprapta ye chachita kishya mudatam trevargika akshanika atmanam ghate dite. Understand? This is not good to attack the temples of others. Understand? You should not try to uh, attack the temples of others. Hmm. Then there is also people are nishthul. They are very cruel. The cruel. The cruelty is also two types. The cruelty to the human beings and cruelty to the animals and birds. When we see the cruelty to the men and women, then actually it creates disturbance in the society unevenness in the society and then compassion and religion is lost and everywhere heartlessness cruelty this irreligion in a type of cruelty spreads everywhere there were some persons like siraj Audala and nero hmm. these were actually very bad persons nero and siraj Audala. And they did so much disturbance in the society. If someone has some type of cruelty in the heart, then we should read the we should read the life history of compassionate persons. And we should learn from them how to be compassionate and gradually try to remove the cruelty in the heart. Understand. Even I remember one time Narendra Modi, the Prime Minister of India, he told a story of uh, Gautam Buddha. Actually, one hunter shot a bird. The bird was injured and he came to Gautam Buddha. And when he came to Buddha, Buddha gave shelter to him. Then there was a debate. Who does the bird belong to? The hunter said that the bird belongs to me because I shot the bird. But Buddha said, the bird belongs to me because I saved the bird, I protected the bird. He has come to take my shelter. He knows you will, you will kill him. Understand? So, ultimately it was decided that the bird belongs to the person who saved the bird, not the one who tried to kill the bird. Understand? So, try like this, we should learn the story. We should hear the stories about how Prahlad Maharaj said, Oh Lord, give me the sins of all the people in the world. Let me suffer for their sinful reactions. How... Chaitanya Mahaprabhu embraced a leper Brahman and made his skin nice again. Mahaprabhu's character is full of compassion. Nityananda Prabhu, full of compassion. We should read these stories, history, and try to give up cruelty. Like Gurudev tells a story that how when Sadhu was bathing in a river and a scorpion had fallen in the stream of the river. Scorpion obviously cannot swim in water. Scorpion is not an aquatic aquatic animal or insect. So, that Sadhu lifted the scorpion from the water so that the scorpion wouldn't drown. But scorpion stung the Sadhu by its tail. Then what happened? Because of the pain, the scorpion fell down from the hand of the Sadhu. Sadhu again lifted. This happened many times. Every time Sadhu was trying to save the scorpion, scorpion was stinging the hand of the Sadhu. Other Sadhu told that Sadhu that don't try to save the scorpion. The scorpion doesn't want to take your mercy. Why you want to get stung again and again unnecessarily? But the Sadhu said, no, if the scorpion cannot give up the nature, I should not also give up my nature. 
Scorpion's nature is to sting, and my nature is to save. Scorpion cannot. Actually, there are some in modern insignificant religions. Uh, you'll see that some insignificant modern religions uh, they talk about uh, cruelty to the animals. This shows that the managers of these religions, they, this actually proclaims the infamy of these managers. How these rulers and controllers of these religions and the office bearers of these religions, uh, they mismanage their religions. This declares that. Like when Gurudev went to Pope and he saw that Pope was eating real animal, the the, 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 boar, the flesh of uh, tender cows, baby cows, then Gurudev was so angry and he said, I don't want to beat this Pope. Understand? So sometimes even in India also, even Hindus, I see that they are so much engaged in sense gratification that they give so much hardship to the bulls who draw the bullock cart and even to the horses. Many times I have seen the horse carts, the, the, the horses are actually are having so many injuries and bone deformities because horse cart was overloaded, they were made to stand for a long time, they were kept in the hot sun, not fed on time, not given any medical attention and sometimes horses literally become like you know vegetables after after bearing the abuse for a long period of time even the bulls there is no limit to the torture bulls get sometimes in india i've seen that uh, generally they are compassionate but sometimes they overload uh, like in india so much sugarcane is to be taken to the sugarcane factory where they extract the juice from the sugarcane and then they make sugar out of it or molasses or jaggery. But sometimes the bullock cart is loaded, just two bullocks and they have to pull huge load of sugarcane. And sometimes on elevation, when they have to go up, they are foaming from the mouth and then they are being beaten from the back by their owner. Somehow or other they try to pull it. But we should not give so much hardship to the bulls and horses. Yes, give them some work, but don't harass them. And when we see this harassment given to the bulls and horses, a compassionate heart, a compassionate person's heart breaks to pieces. One must give up harshness to the animals. Then also there is one type of cruelty, hard-heartedness or duplicity. Suppose someone is very selfish. And being selfish, if someone behaves in a crooked manner with someone, then that is called crookedness, kutilta. To satisfy one's selfish end, we behave cruelly to the other person, that is crookedness. So that is a sinful activity. Understand? Then there is also madness. Madness is of four types. The Bhagavatam describes that Abhyartita stada tasme sthanani kale dado dutam panam striya suna yatra dharma chatur vida unashaya chamana ya chata rupa mada prabo tato nutam madam kamam raju vairam chapanjamam. Actually, Kadiuga told Parishit Maharaj, You want to throw me out of your kingdom, but this is my age. Brahma has told me to rule now. You should give me a place where I should stay. Then Prahlada, then Prakshit Maharaj said, you can stay where there is gambling, where there is liquor is being served, where there is illicit sex with women, and where there is killing of animals going on, you should stay there. But he said, if someone doesn't engage in these simple activities, then he said, I will give you another place. You should... Uh, You should stay in the gold also, he told. Understand. 
So Bhagavatam describes this, that these are sinful activities. So madness comes from taking marijuana, liquor, LSD, charas, ganja, bhang, all that, intoxication, chemical dependency, that is on rise. Uh, uh, that is on rise now. And also due to the six enemies like lust, greed, anger, madness, envy also creates madness. Also sometimes madness is induced by atheism. If one doesn't believe in God, one becomes mad. And sometimes due to dull nature. Actually, taking intoxication is causing the destruction of the world. So many bad things are happening. And the intoxication is actually the abode of all the sins. So for example, liquor, tadi, tadi means from palm tree, they make some incision and then some liquid comes out of this palm trees that oozes. And after sunrise, that liquid becomes an intoxication. Then there is ganja, bhang, afim, charas, tambaku. Tambaku means tobacco. Then there is cigarettes, the Indian hand-rolled cigarettes, BDs. Then cigarettes and tea, they all are actually intoxication. Actually, this intoxication makes your heart very hard and destroys your health. If you take a film, then a person's heart will become like animal. And tobacco will make you dull. It will make your intelligence dull. It's a great sin to take intoxication. Unless a doctor has told you, he has directly told you that you must take this intoxication. You should not take any intoxication. Understand? Unless an expert doctor has told you that, okay, you have to take this ganja, this many leaves you have to take, then you have to mix with these seeds, then you have to... Uh, Something like this medicine he has told. Uh, otherwise, you should not take any intoxication unless doctor has told you. Also, there is lust, anger, greed, madness, envy. All these are six enemies. These control our mind and they make person a very sinful. But suppose you want to, in a sinless manner, you want to earn your livelihood. And you desire to earn some wealth and some ingredients so that you can live a comfortable life. That is not sinful. But you want to live a very luxurious lifestyle, then that is sinful. That is lust. But to desire to live a simple lifestyle without giving trouble to anyone, that is not sinful. Suppose your desires are not fulfilled, then what happens? Uh, it will cause anger. Understand? I remember in India there was one boy. His father bought him a sports car, but that sports car was not up to standard. So he went to the. He told father, "I want another sports car." But father didn't give him. So he went to the bridge and uh, and threw the sports car down the bridge into the river. He purposefully destroyed it so that father will buy him another sports car. You see. Angry. Oh, my father has not given me very expensive sports car. So I will destroy the first one. I will get another one. Understand? So when your lust is not fulfilled, anger comes. And when anger comes, there is quarrel. We speak very bitter words. We beat up other persons. There is also war. And and finally, sometimes there is suicide. Everything becomes possible if anger comes. If the greed comes, slowly it will engage you in sin. If you think that I am very great, that is actually badness. We should think I am insignificant. The more you think that more insignificant you are, the more humble you will be. One should give up the badness.
actually whatever good things you have you should depend on that you should always have the pride however you can give up all the prides all the egos but only one ego you should always keep the pride that i am the servant of sri krishna i am servant of bhagwan this pride you should not give up this is not madness but we should give up other prides other false egos and we cannot tolerate the progress of others if someone is making progress in bhakti or in job in career and then uh, having property big house then we cannot tolerate that that is actually enviousness so this is all due to the sin like in india i see many times people build a big house and outside the house they put the picture of a ghost or some demon actually they make a small demon picture then i asked why they put the picture of demon on their house they said this is to stop the bad eye bad sight many people look and then the progress stops many people are so envious that they will touch your cow and the cow will stop giving milk some people are so envious they will touch your house and the tiles in your house or the wall will develop a crack they are so envious so we should not be envious of others progress this is the root cause of all sins and if there are six enemies out of the six enemies if one two or even more enemies attack you then you become mad and when you become mad you become atheist atheism is also of two types if you think that there is no god ascertain that there is no god this is one type of atheism and there is also agnosticism means i don't know if god is there or not i'm not saying he is not there but i doubt he is there also so this is also one type of madness this atheism to doubt the existence of god or to declare that there is no god understand but we should try to regularly check we are are we becoming atheistic those who are actually affected by the wind disorder means there are three things in our body there is actually cuff bile and air if the air element in your body is disturbed then people become atheist or doubtful it is seen that before people 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 become mad they were actually believing in god they were theistic they were believed in god but as a result of some incidents they become mad then they lost their faith in god this is also the result of mad but if you give medical treatment to that person and remove his wind disorder air disorder is vata dosha by the ayurvedic treatment then again that person will start believing in god there are some persons actually they are crazy all day they say hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna hare krishna they will chant loudly they will say hare krishna hare krishna but if you ask them who are you but we ask them who is krishna then they say i am myself krishna is all madness understand is all madness and then also another type of sin is laziness lethargy dullness so actually a saintly person pious person should be free from dullness lethargy he should be active service serving guru vaishnavas deities another type of sin shila bhakti no thakur is telling that to behave in an untrue manner that is also a sin to speak a lie is a sin and also saying that i am a religious person but then to then doing duplicity in real dealings in the name of religion that is also sin behaving in a false manner cheating others that is also sin and to show partiality to others that is also sin one should never lie understand you should never lie it is definitely a sin to lie but to take a vow 
to take an oath and then lie is a bigger sin. Like in India, if you go to the judicial system, you have to put your hand on Bhagavad Gita and you have to take a vow. I touch Bhagavad Gita, I take a vow that I will speak truth, nothing but truth. But then people on oath, they lie. That is a bigger sin. If you are Christian, you have to touch Bible. If you are Muslim, you have to touch Quran. If you are Sikh, you have to touch the Guru Granth Sahib. The judge will tell you, first touch this book and take an oath that I will. I am acting as a witness in this case. And I will speak truth and nothing but truth. People take an oath on their touching their religious scripture, but they lie. That's a very big sin. And those who lie, no one believes them. And finally, everyone begins to hate them. Understand? Then there is also dharma kapatya, duplicity in religious activities. This is a very great big sin. Those persons who are engaged in duplicity in the name of religion, they are called crane devotee. Crane. Crane means bagula. There is one bird called crane. This crane, baka, is full of duplicity. If you see a crane standing in the middle of a field, silently, standing on one leg sometimes, closing the eyes as if in meditation and trance, but that crane is only waiting for a fish to come out. And then that crane will devour that fish alive. It's a very ruthless and cruel bird. But that bird will stand as if in meditation. There are some some persons who act as if they are devotees, but they are only looking for devouring others, harassing others, and um, exploiting the property of others. And there are some persons who are actually putting on tilak, they also put kanti mala, they put kaupin, they have bahir was like a sannyasi. They also have a tantra. Means all the insignia, all the signs of a religious person they put on their body, but absolutely no bhakti is there for Krishna in their heart. Such persons are Dharma Dwaji. They are actually heralding the flag of religion in their hand. I am a religious person, I am a religious person, but in the namesake only. Externally they may act, uh, appear very religious, but in the heart there is no religious. They are duplicitous sadhus. And there are some persons who are doing big cheaters. Means when they are talking to others, when they are dealing with others, they don't reveal what is in their heart. They keep something in their heart and talk something else. Understand? So they are actually cheaters, duplicitous persons. Everyone hates such persons. Means they will talk something else in front of you, but in their heart there will be something else. Everyone hates such persons. Then also, if you are not supporting the righteous party and you are supporting unrighteous party, it's called actually partiality, duplicity. One should reject that. One should always support a party which is righteous, religious, not take side of the unrighteous person. Like Pandavas were righteous and Kauravas were unrighteous. So Krishna supported Pandavas, not Kauravas. Vishma supported Kauravas, but actually his intention was to only encourage other fights. Always follow the order of seniors and spiritual master. Guru Avagya, one of the seniors, Guru Avagya, it is also of three types. Shri Bhaktanath Thakur is telling that to reject mother and father, to disobey mother and father, and to look down upon mother and father, not follow the orders, is not type of Guru Avagya. Number two is rejecting the instructions of the scriptures and Gurudev. 
and then number three is disrespecting one spiritual masters. If somehow our spiritual master or our mother and father somehow beat up or even chastise us, we should not stay those over them. Oh, now I reject my guru, I reject my mother and father. We should not do that. You must be knowing the story from the life of Chila Bhakti Pragya and Kesha Goswami Maharaj. He was taken, take, taking care of a woman who was afflicted by cholera, acute cholera, dysentery. He was so late taking care of her all night. He reached home late because he had to arrange for medicine, saline, and all types of salt so that she will not have dehydration and all. He reached home late, his wife, his mother was arrested. Shila Bhakti Pragyan Kishan Vasavya Maharaj's mother chastised him. Hey, why are so late? But he didn't speak a word. He tolerated the criticism of his mother, chastisement of his mother. But his friend told his mother that Vinodha, Vinod Bihari Prabhu, Vinod, he was busy in serving an orphan woman, helpless woman who had no support and trying to arrange for her, her medicines. That's why he became late. That is the reason. But Vinod, the, Vinod Prabhu, Vinod Bihari Prabhu never justified his activity. He tolerated mother's criticism. Understand? We should be very, very, we should not disrespect one's spiritual master. Once Vinod Bihari Brahmachari was told by Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada, go quickly. Your mother is very sick, she's on deathbed. Go and see her and come back. But he didn't go. Rupan asked him, why didn't you go? He said, my mother is on deathbed. When I go there, she will definitely tell me, we have so much land. You become the next landlord. You look after the land we have, our ancestral property. And I will not be able to reject her last request on the deathbed. And then I will be entangled in family life again, in the management of the property and land again. And I will lose this human form of life which is meant for achieving the Lord of of Krishna. But if I don't go to my mother, she will be always remembering me every moment when my son will come and she will give up her life. Not, not able to see me, she will not forget me. Crying and crying, she will give up her life. But when she will die, she will get a very good destination because when she remembers me, she will also remember you because you are my guru. And when she remembers you, she will also remember Krishna. Ultimately, she will get the benefit of remembering Krishna. And by remembering Krishna at a time of death, on the pretext of remembering me, she will get a good destination. But if I go there and I will follow her order, she will not remember Krishna, she will not remember you, she will not remember me. In a satisfied condition, she will give her life and then she will not get a good birth. And I will also lose my human birth because I will be spending the rest of my life in managing the land and property. So I don't want to go. Such a great devotee, Shila Bhakti Prakyam Kesha Goswami Maharaj was there. Actually, did not disobey his guru, but rather he understood the importance of guru. But we should not give a guru who is actually deluded. And will tell us, follow some act, some, follow my orders, which against bhakti and irreligious, we should not follow them. Suppose we reject the orders of our spiritual master, we are against religious principles. The sin will not touch us, it will not touch us. Example is given to Allah Maharaj. Allah rejected his father. He didn't follow his father. His father was telling him, You worship me. He said, no, I will worship only Vishnu. He didn't get any sin. Bharat rejected his mother, Kaikai, Kai, because she sent Ram to forest. There is a reason why Kaikai Kai sent Ram to forest. Ram only had told her, you should not disrespect Kaikai. Kai. But anyway, Bharat rejected his mother. Bali Maharaj rejected the order of Shukracharya because he wanted to serve Lord Vamande. So, Prasad did not follow the order of his father, Yerindya Kashyipu. Bharat Maharaj never followed the order of his mother, Kai Kai. And Kai Kai told Bharat, you only call me mother once 
and then Bharat said, "No, I can never call you mother. I'll only call you call call you Queen Kai Kai, not Mother Kai, because you sent Ram to forest." And also, Bali Maharaj rejected the order of Shakracharya Ji. Shakracharya told him, "Don't give him the promise; otherwise, he'll take all your kingdom." And then Bali Maharaj said, "No harm." If he is Vishnu, let him take everything. Everything belongs to him, anyways. One should not be lusty, covetous. Lust is also of three types: lust for wealth, lust for women or opposite sex, and lust for prestige. If you are very much attached to wealth and sense objects, that is called artha lampatya. And when you become very attached to the wealth, then that hope for making more money, more money, becomes so intense that a person can never be peaceful. And I have seen in India and in America also. There was a company, Fortune five hundred company maybe, but the CEO of that company did some crime, corrupt. Business practices and the FBI, federal government of America, arrested that person. Although that person had so much wealth, but still wanted to cheat the government, and the government arrested. So how can there be peace if you are only lusty for money, money, money? Whatever money you have, is satisfied. One should only collect what is needful. Like there was a Maharaj who used to collect only three rupees and three kurtas and three uttari. He said, "Only three days is enough for me. If I collect the fourth dress, I will be greedy. Over collection is also sin. So we should not keep on our heart the desire for sense, just and sense gratification. Attachment to money is also big sin. I should never associate with someone else, wife or a or a prostitute." Even if you are married to a woman, don't be attached to your health. Some bodily considerations are there, and some societal society considerations are also there. We should not be attached to a woman. If you are attached to a woman, you will be completely destroyed. Bhagavatam, third canto, thirty-four chapter, thirty-three and thirty-four verse talks about this big sin. सत्यम शौचम दया मौनम बुद्धिर्शांतिशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुंगेशुं
one should not associate with one's wife if she is pregnant. As long as she is in menstruation, four days, one should not associate with her. One should engage in religious practice so that one will not become lusty for woman. And one who is desirous of prestige, all his activities are very selfish. Therefore, one should stay away from this lust for wealth, woman and prestige and follow religious principles. One should not be very much selfish. To be selfish is a big sin. So one should give up this selfishness. I don't know what will have problem. One should not be selfish to such a degree that it will cause harm to others. Such selfishness is not recommended. Actually, if you are too selfish, then the children and your family will have problem. And miserliness will come unnecessarily. So many religious activities are disturbed. Like many times I see in India, the husband is smoking. Mother, his wife and children are nearby. So they have become second-hand smokers. And their health is also so So the husband is so selfish. He's smoking right in front of his children and wife. Wife cannot say anything. And she's also becoming second-hand smoker. And her health is, she gets tuberculosis also. Children have tuberculosis. It's all selfishness. One should not engage in quarrel, stealing, false ego. And this, all these sins will come if you are very selfish. Apavitrata. One should not be impure. Impurity is also of two types, bodily impurity and mental impurity. And again the impurity is of three types. Based on the country you are in, the time you are in, and the person. If you go to the countries which are impure, you will get impurity due to visiting wrong places. Some countries are impure because the residents of that country are impure, their activities are impure. Therefore, in the scriptures, Unless there is a specific reason, one should not visit the Blecha Deshas, the countries which are uh, which are inhabited by the meat eaters. Now, Srila Gurudev visited so many countries, America, Germany, England, Russia, China, Hong Kong, South Africa, everywhere he visited. A lot of meat eaters are in those countries, but Gurudev was never contaminated. Because everywhere on the airplane he was chanting at least 1 lakh, 2 lakh, 3 lakhs, holy name. And also he was on a mission to deliver the people for that person. Bhaktidan Sai Maharaj was not contaminated. Because he had a specific reason. But without a cause, don't go for sightseeing. Oh, I want to go to Paris to just see Eiffel Tower. Or I want to go to Statue of Liberty in New York. No, don't go for that reason. You'll become impure. But you have a mission. You want to give classes. You want to distribute Bhagavad Gita, you want to do service as a pujari in a temple, you can travel to these countries. You want to enlighten others, you want to help in the mission of spreading Krishna consciousness, no harm, we can go. Uh, like Srila Gurudev once told me, and many times he told me actually, that go to Houston, there is a Govindji Gaudiyama, please go there, you will arrange your so I couldn't get visa, so I couldn't go there. But anyways, Gurudev was sending me to America for preaching. So that is not his con that is not contamination, but that is actually service to Bhagavan. But unnecessarily don't travel here and there. Impure countries, you'll become contaminated. There are certain reasons you can go to the countries which are habited by BVT eaters. Suppose you want to learn about that country, you can go there. You can go to that country for the welfare of that country. There are many nurses from India. They go to Germany or Ireland, England. Their Indian nurses are very much expert, especially from Kerala. Malayalam nurse, very famous. 
You can go to that country to do some welfare to that country, to help that country. You can go. You can also go to any country to deliver that country from the hands of intruders. Understand? If any, suppose someone attacks some country, say England, and is attacked by the intruders, wicked intruders, and they want to take over England. Understand? To save the country of England, India can send the forces and these armed forces of India must go to England to help it from being overtaken by the wrong persons. Understand? So that time you can go to that country to deliver that country from the hands of the sinful and ferocious intruders. So if you want to go there for war or battle, it is not forbidden. And to preaching, you can go to the countries. To preach religion, to religious doctrine, you can go to Vaitya Deshas, which is inhabited by the meat eaters. But don't go to the Vaitya Desha to, to learn the to learn the not to acquire the knowledge like LLB or barrister at law, all these degrees. Don't go there. Don't go there to learn the trade. Don't go to the Western countries to learn their religion. No need. A lot of people in India, they go to some Arabic countries or Western country to learn their religion. It's forbidden. Don't follow their religion. Suppose you go to the Western countries or countries of meat eaters, basically, not just Western countries, but wherever there are Mlecha people, those who eat meat are there. If you go to learn their knowledge, their religious principles, or you want to live with those persons, then you will be degraded. Your Aryan culture will be degraded. And suppose you unnecessarily go to the Western countries to learn their religious principles, their activities, to associate with them, then you have to do atonement. For example, Malamas, there is one extra leap year. And that Malamas is actually considered very sinful, as per Karma Kanda, is impure. So there are certain activities are forbidden in this particular Malamas or Purushottam Mas. You know, certain time periods are forbidden, some activities. Like for example, Chaturmasya also, many things are forbidden in Chaturmasya. Understand? And if you eat brinjal or eggplant or tomatoes in this month of Kartik, you will get a great sin. Understand? So sin may come if you don't follow the rules and regulations but for, for, for that particular time period. Don't sleep too late or too early like this. Don't sleep in the evening time, twilight time. Don't sleep during Brahma Murta. That will give you impurity. Don't take the food which is cooked by the drunkards and lusty persons. Suppose you give the drunkards and lusty persons the activities of cooking or worshipping the deity, then that will cause impurity. Suppose your body is impure, your clothes are impure, your bed is impure and your house is dirty, that will cause impurity. Suppose you pass urine and stool, then that time you should use the water to remove the your bodily impurity. Give up badness and enviousness, otherwise your heart will become impure. Also you should follow the etiquette. Actually a lot of people they give up the rules and regulations and the etiquette which is prescribed by Narad Muni, Narad Pancharatra and other books. And instead they take, they take, take up the 
behavior of the or etiquettes of the lectures, meditators. Such people are not good. Understand? Those who associate with the meditators, lectures, they will give up this pure institution of Varnashram, division of the society as per the social and spiritual designations. And they will become the meditators themselves. Such persons who follow the meditators activities should also do atonement. Understand? Don't be behave in a manner that is opposed to Vedic culture. Then the destruction of the whole world. There are certain activities which cause the destruction of the whole world. The activities that destroy the whole world is divided into five parts. For example, you want to cause a disturbance in the spiritual activities like preaching, Bhagavad Sapta, Bhagavad Katha. The second activity that destroys the world is actually duplicitous renunciation. It's false renunciation. Then number three is actually in the name of religion you are propagating wrong etiquettes, ill behavior that is also wrong, that destroys the world. Unnecessarily waging a war on others, unrighteous war waging on others, and unnecessarily committing expenditure or spending money, it all destroys the world. Suppose some person is engaged in some pious activity, and you cause disturbance to that person's pious activities, understand, then that will cause damage to the world. Suppose by practicing devotion to Sri Krishna or some spiritual knowledge will awake in your heart, then you develop detachment from the sense objects. That is the true renunciation. But suppose you just make artificial practice of renunciation, then that renunciation is actually damaging, it causes disturbance. For ordinary persons, they should live in a householder life and follow householder life properly. That is their duty. And when true renunciation will awaken in their heart, they should take up this sannyas ashram. The householder should follow service to Sri Krishna. They should enter service to Sri Krishna. Then gradually they should come out of this householder ashram and take up Vanaprastha or Sanyas. This is the real renunciation. Many persons, they are very much fed up of the daily quarrels at home, always quarreling with wife or husband. But due to some scarcity, so due to some scarcity, lack of food or clothing or something, and sometimes they are afraid of some calamity, they give up the household life and become sadhus and sannyas. But this is also sinful. Suppose you have a momentary renunciation. Just for a momentary renunciation has come in your heart. And you give up that ashrama, householder ashrama, rest ashrama. You have no right to do so. Some people don't have not developed the natural renunciation. And they have not developed the natural renunciation. But they shave their head, put the kanti and put tilak and they put on all the insignia, all the signs of renunciation and leave the home. And they think that by doing so, I will achieve Bhagavan. But that is their imagination. Such momentary or unnatural renunciation will vanish in a few days time. Again they will become durachari, they will become uh, act in an improper manner. So therefore, as per one's qualification, a prescribed behavior is given in the scriptures. So you should see your qualification and based on that qualification, behave. That is sadachar. Sadachar means see your qualification. See what level of dedication you have, what qualities you have. And then you follow your activities. Suppose you have the qualification to be a householder, then be an ideal householder like Pandavas. If your qualification is like sannyasi, then try to be like Madhavendra Puri or Ishwar Puri or Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. 
But if you are not qualified to be a sannyasi and you are pretending to be a sannyasi, then you will fall down. Svesapya adhikariya nishthasa gunah parikirdita vipariyastu dosha sadhu uvhaya desha nirlaya. So, this is actually a very big uh, article. So, we'll stop here today. And uh, because the mention of the scenes came, I want to discuss elaborately uh, from another book of Bhaktivinoda Thakur that what are the different scenes. And then we'll discuss also this sin and uh, uh, Aparad also. Uh, and then. Uh, We'll carry on next time. If anyone has any comments or questions, please ask me. Thank you so much for bearing with me. Today I was reading a Hindi book and a translating, so I may have made some mistakes. Please forgive me. But this amazing book actually by Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur, uh, Sri Chaitanya Shikshamrut. And Srila Gurudev has done a wonderful job of publishing this in Hindi language. Very thick book. Jaiva Dharma and Chaitanya Shikshamrut, these are very good books. Shri Bhakti Rakhik Shidhar Maharaj used to say that Chaitanya Shikshamrut is for the Western devotees and Jaiva Dharma is for Indian devotees, more suitable for Indian devotees. Actually, Gurudev used to say that all the devotees should read Jaiva Dharma, no harm. But Chaitanya Shikshamrut also is a good book, very, very good book. Otherwise, Shri Gurudev would not have translated it. And such clear cut distinction of scenes, what are the different types of scenes, the reason behind those scenes, why those scenes arise. You know, no one else can do it. Saptam Goswami Shri Bhakti Thakur has done this. We are very, very much grateful to him. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Vanchata Patra Vishya Krupa Sindhu Vishya Pratana Pravani Vaishna Vibhya Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Nandavad Pravans. Thank you so much for that very interesting class today, actually. Um, Ananga Mohan Prabhu, Jai Diwani, please. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gangarvika Giridhari Radha Vinod Bihari Jiki Jai O Vishnu Padashto Tarashata Shri Shri Madhubhati Vedanta Vishnu Deity Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai O Vishnu Parashto Tarashata Shri Shri Madhubhati Vedanta Nadandi Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Nitya Lila Pravishto Vishnu Karishto Tarashata Shri Shri Matabhati Vidanda Narayan Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai Nitya Lila Pravishto Vishnu Karishto Tarashata Shri Shri Matabhati Vidanda Vahamana Goswami Maharaj ki jai, Nitya Lira Pravishta ho, Vishnu Parashto Tarashata, Shri Shri Marva, Tividanta Swami, Maharaj ki jai, Nitya Lira Pravishta ho, Vishnu Parashto Tarashata,